ladies and gentlemen. It's the Pro Wrestling Report primetime Saturday night right here on My24 Milwaukee. We're going to be taking a look in depth at CM Punk's pipe bomb one year later. Also, this past Monday's WWE Raw, Ring of Honor results of their pay-per-view last weekend. And also, celebrating the 4th of July, we're going to take a look at the top three patriotic professional wrestling stars. All that along with Star of the Week and a special birthday presentation. This is the Pro Wrestling Report primetime Saturday night, which starts right now, right here on My24 Milwaukee. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Pro Wrestling Report primetime Saturday night right here on My24 Milwaukee. Damian Nelson sitting alongside David Octavius at Tiberius, the alleged backyard one-time Hall of Fame hero. And uh, let's go into this week's uh, top story, where we're going to be taking a look back at one year ago this week. It was June 27, 2011, where the pipe bomb was dropped on WWE Raw, which put CM Punk in the position he is now in WWE. That would lead into a matchup with John Cena in the Money in the Bank pay-per-view last year, which would be a couple of weeks later. And all this surrounded by CM Punk's contract expiring with WWE. He laid in everybody, including Triple H, Stephanie McMahon, and of course, Vince McMahon, and talked a lot about what a lot of us and you have been saying for a long time about World Wrestling Entertainment and the state of professional wrestling. But David, what we want to talk about today is where did it go? Where did it go right? And where did it go wrong? Because CM Punk would go on to win the WWE Championship at the Money in the Bank pay-per-view. We were there in Chicago, an amazing event, the atmosphere unlike many other we've been a part of. He would also then go into SummerSlam, where we would see Kevin Nash get involved, get into a program, if you will, a, a dialogue with Triple H, uh, where uh, several new terms were coined, mm -hmm. and seemingly sort of fizzle off. Well, you know what? If anything, it benefited one person and one person only. That's been CM Punk. He's been the rock star. Yeah. Since it's happened, he's been on this huge rise, big missile on his back. But, 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 one important, important thing. No, there's been no more flash. There's been no more substance. There's been no more style. All the things he complained about as he was, as his country was, was expiring, they've all been fixed. He never got his ice cream bars, did he? <laughs> they tried. They did try, but they never got him. They never got off the ground. So many things went forward, but nothing ever changed except for CM Punk's star status. And you know what? Since the big pipe bomb, yes, he has not been, what, a two-time WWE At champion? Least. He's one of the main guys on Raw. But And this is no knock on CM Punk. As it will be interpreted. He, with the exception of... SummerSlam and maybe Survivor Series, not even no. Survivor Series, he hasn't headlined a pay-per-view as that, been that the number match. one guy on the Raw brand, as the guy that holds the company's namesake championship. Arguably, neither has the World Heavyweight Champion. That's complete. That's SmackDown. That's like, that's like the little orphan Annie of the World Wrestling Entertainment. They don't really care too much about SmackDown. It's just, you know, good, good for business, but... It's, it's amazing how, though, CM Punk really, he hasn't done a whole lot since then. Yeah. And uh, what was it, though? Because it was right around that SummerSlam time. I believe Alberto Del Rio cashed in, thus uh, oh. taking the championship away from Destiny. CM Punk. And it was around that time where things just, it was like all this momentum, the business indicators, everything went up for WWE after that June 27th pipe bomb event, if you will. But the follow-up wasn't there, and some even saw CM Punk as a guy who was not a man of his word because he did ultimately end up re-signing with WWE. But how great was it after the pipe bomb and after winning the WWE Championship when Punk went rogue, if you will, showing up at Q&A sessions, uh, running around really not uh, a part of WWE. I think it lasted a couple weeks. But uh, playing the role of WWE Champion CM at the center. It was so great initially. It was because there was something new. It was something different that we hadn't seen in a while. But then it all just blended back in together. And John Cena once again became the face of the company, where he was then out in front. CM Punk is just keeping that belt warm for John Cena, because eventually John Cena 
is going to wind it back. How long has it been, though, since John Cena has been the uh, WWE you know what? champion? We mentioned this last week. It's mm-hmm. been about a year. Yeah. It's time. Some, including you, I believe, have said that there are people to blame for for Punk's uh, failure to rise to a higher level than he did after the pipe bomb segment, for it to trickle, I guess, if you will. And one of those people that people have laid blame on is Triple H himself. Well, if you ever did you see, well, first of all, Triple H, he beat CM Punk, Mm -hmm. right? Was that at October? Hell in a Cell? We'll go with that, sure. And when they had their promos, Triple H, he is very slick. He is quite... He is the cerebral assassin, and you're not going to get over too much on, C- uh, on, on, on Triple H, and that's exactly what happened with CM Punk. As great as Punk was on the mic, he went up against the guy that had the most stroke in the company, the master manipulator, Triple H. One year later, clearly, as you said, CM Punk has benefited from the pipe bomb incident. But the question you must ask yourself is, did WWE overall benefit long term from such a shocking business event? No, they did not. They, 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 they ran an angle that had a ton of buzz in the summer months when the business is usually down. And then seemingly walked right away from it. Of course. Well, that is looking back one year ago at the pipe bomb moment in WWE, CM Punk, the WWE champion. And still to come here on the Pro Wrestling Report, we're going to be talking about WWE Raw. What? What's wrong with you? Nothing. I'm just, I can only imagine what's still to come. WWE SmackDown from last night, last Sunday's Ring of Honor pay-per-view, and this week's Star of the Week. The Pro Wrestling Report primetime continues right here on My24 Milwaukee. Back, ladies and gentlemen, the Pro Wrestling Report Prime Time Saturday night, right here on My 24 Milwaukee. Important programming notes we want to share with you. This Monday's PWR Monday Night Meltdown will not be broadcasting live Monday night after WWE Raw because SmackDown's live next Tuesday, so, David Hero. So. I, get a, I get a Monday night off. You get a Monday night off, but we'd like to call you into the office Tuesday night after that live SmackDown where we recap both shows on uh, Tuesday, a special edition of The Meltdown, Tuesday night, 9 o'clock p.m. Central Standard Time. And next Wednesday, it is the 4th of July, if you will, and there will be no primetime Wednesday night. So enjoy the holiday and enjoy it without the Pro Wrestling Report on uh, Well, yeah, you must have, week. like, something special planned. Maybe we, maybe we can show your match in some entirety you and kevin thorne from blizzard brawl it's out there already but we can remind no, people not gonna happen. the interns are off the production team's off everybody's off it's a holiday but that's a huge rating bonanza for us let's go to this week's uh, wwe raw report and talk about this past monday's broadcast on the usa network which saw the string of slater haters continue this week it was psycho sid making his return to wwe for the first time in a very long time and sid a man who is indeed a former two-time champion in wwe uh back in the ring and he was, uh, he was there. Hey, Sid finally made a shot. You know what I mean? I mean, the guy's known for no-showing indie events all over the country, but shows up for Monday Night Raw. I think would you was, ever book him? Personally, no. I would never call Sid to book him on a show. But obviously other people have no problem, you know, rolling the dice. And, you know, he is a wrestling legend, and I'll give him the respect he deserves. But, Wow. I mean, I could not believe it when Psycho Sid came out. I mean, I, I was expecting it could have been anybody else but Psycho yeah. Sid. It, 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 this is so great what they're doing because it's the people you just don't ever expect to see. Whether it be Vader, obviously Wendy Richter last week, uh, Roddy Piper making a surprise, Mick Foley surprise. And going forward, going into the 1000 Raw, this is quite perfect. These aren't huge, big, monumental returns. But these but are people that the, can be used to get it's a... It's the nostalgia pop. It's the, make, it's the feel-good moment. Yeah. E- exactly. It's like, almost like a Royal Rumble surprise entrant. Because once yes. Heath Slater's in the ring and his promo's going, you can tell, you're waiting for those words that will tip off as to who it is and whose music will hit. I'm hoping, I'm hoping to see some fun and shenanigans the next couple of weeks leading up to St. Louis, which, by the way, 
We're going to be in St. We Louis. We will be there. Who do you think's next? Oh, I, I have no idea. Really don't. Um, Chris Jericho returns to WWE Raw this past Monday night, and uh, he would uh, suffer defeat by Chris, uh, John Cena. Uh, a defeat by a disqualification. Special thanks to the Big Show for interfering. Chris Jericho comes back. No mention of Brazil whatsoever. I'm sorry? Brazil. No mention he, of it. Was he grooming? Something like that. It was some new exercise thing he was working on. Zumba? But Chris Jericho right back into a main program with John Cena. Both guys now going to be in the Money in the Bank ladder match. Both guys will be chasing for that guaranteed lock along with the big show. And you got to figure Alberto Del Rio and maybe even your boy toy, The Miz, could be involved in that Money in the Bank match. Because boy it's toys. only open to former WWE champions. Interesting concept uh, to do that with this particular matchup, the Money in the Bank matchup, which I, maybe gives some credibility to those who could win uh, and uh, cash in that Money in the Bank briefcase down the road. Well, but who's John Cena to make this decision? John, he suggested it, I guess. And, like, they're going to say no to John Cena in the Money in the Bank match. It, it brings a whole new dynamic. And John Cena right now, you got to figure, has got to be one of the favorites to win. He doesn't lose to anybody except The Rock. And he's a four-letter word. John. No, oh, Rock. Uh, overall, this past Monday night's WWE Raw, we saw Dolph Ziggler in action, Alberto Del Rio in action. We saw Daniel Bryan get a big win. Poor big show Dolph defeats Ziggler. Everyone screams that they love Dolph Ziggler. And they put him in a match, contract on a pole, and neither guy can win. That was a high pole. No, no, they're just flipping and flopping and slipping out of their hands. And I, I, Were there I, elbow drops? There, 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 there was a few elbow drops, but... It was an opportunity to once again establish Dolph Ziggler as that main guy, and they don't. It's almost like it's the second coming of Zack Ryder. Until SmackDown Friday night. Wow, well, I'm just saying. We'll talk about SmackDown a little bit later on. That's this week's WWE Raw report, and I uh, want to let you know that uh, we won't be covering Impact here this week due to a taping schedule change for the Pro Wrestling Report Prime Time Saturday night. However, each and every Thursday night, right after the live version of TNA Impact Wrestling on Spike TV, you can join us at PWRShow.com to listen to our live one-hour broadcast, Sudden Impact Radio, where we talk about all the happenings of w uh, T TNA Impact Wrestling each and every Thursday night with your phone calls and more so you can check that out right now at pwrshow.com but david what we are going to do is take a look in depth at a special segment here fourth of july is coming up on wednesday just in a few days obviously a holiday where we celebrate our independence and it's always fun to look back at stars of the past as we talked about with the nostalgia pop and what we're going to look at right now are those three big names those three stars where you think of them you hear their music you see them and you think that is a patriot. I'm not talking about Del Wilkes. So who would you say comes in at number three, the third best patriotic star in wrestling history? Boy, you know what? It's kind of almost a, a toss-up for me. It's like you got Hulk Hogan, the real American, and Dusty Rhodes, the dweem. The American dweem. The American dweem. I mean, Hogan. And the all-American American Jack Swagger. Hogan battled Iron Sheik, Nikolai Volkov, Mr. Fuji, Sika, Killer Khan, Kamala. Don't forget Nikolai. The Mountie. He always got his man. And then, of course, you have Dusty Rhodes, who would feud with Ivan and Nikita and Crusher Khrushchev. So, I mean, those, those two guys, for me, tied at number three. Who? Hogan and Dusty Rhodes. We talked in circles there. Okay, that's fine. Just want to make sure so I can get the notes here properly. Number uh -huh. three for Hogan, huh? Yeah, abso well, absolutely, yes. Dusty Rhodes. Du the common man. The common man. The son of a plumber. Yeah, absolutely. The man who, so from his right loins, there, came Cody and yeah, Dustin see, Rhodes. So people can't say that I'm hating on Cody Rhodes. You didn't say anything about Cody I'm in that whole that. description about why you picked you the American right Dusty now, Rhodes. But yeah, number three, the Dweem and the Hulkster. Never saw, think, thought I'd see those two paired together in any type of situation. Right. All right. Well, number two. You got to go with good old hacksaw Jim Duggan. Ho, with the two by four. I mean, with the exception of his little hiccup with the Iron Sheik in New Jersey many moons ago. 
has ever has, is there an is there a more patriotic wrestler USA. than Hacksaw? USA. No. I mean, he walks USA. to the ring, the two by four, the blue shorts, and that crowd just goes crazy. USA nonstop. I thought maybe your number two would be the uh, what was it the American Males? Buff Bagwell and Scotty Riggs? No, 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 no. N nor is Corporal Kirshner on this list. <laughs> Hacksaw Jim Duggan. All right. And the flag, the ho, oh, the USA. Remember yes. when he would come out with the little flags on the 2 by 4 as uh, well? Yes. Uh, a man who really does embody the spirit, I guess you would say, of Americana. And number one is going to be a bit controversial, especially oh, if you think back to WrestleMania 7. It can't be. Sergeant Slaughter is without a doubt the number one most patriotic wrestler. Yes. Wearing a G.I. Joe shirt today? I'm wearing my Joker shirt today. Sarge, yes, he, he was Speaking an Iraqi shirts. sympathizer. And yes, he did team with General Adnan and okay, Colonel see? Mustafa against number three All-American Hulk Hogan. But, but overall, but that, overall, G.I. Joe, Sergeant Slaughter is my number one most patriotic wrestler of all time. Definitely can't argue with that. I mean, aside from that little hook, hiccup, which if you look back to why WWE did all that, it makes all the sense in the world. The heat that was generated during that WrestleMania uh, was amazing. WrestleMania 7 mm -hmm. uh, out in Los Angeles, Hogan versus Slaughter. Sergeant Slaughter headlined a WrestleMania. Let's not forget yes, that. Yes, he did. Absolutely. And uh, with the cartoon involvement with G.I. Joe and all the other things that uh, Slaughter does, did, and uh, will continue to do, definitely ranks uh, top on that list of patriotic stars. So Hogan, the Dweem, Hacksaw Jim Duggan, and, uh, and Sergeant, uh, Sergeant Slaughter. Sergeant Slaughter. No Kurt Angle on that list? Does he get an honorable mention? He's an Olympic gold medalist? No, not really. Really? No. Red, white, and blue? He might be in the top ten, but he's really? nowhere near the top three. Really? Well, you could throw Barry Windham and Mike Rotundo on there, the U.S. Express. Hmm. Mm hmm. Okay. Well, uh, share yours with us, ladies and gentlemen, as we go into this 4th of July holiday weekend. Uh, actually, it's on a Wednesday this week. It is Wednesday. This year. And I'll be at Six Flags on Wednesday with the, man, right? with the man beast Rhino. Rhino? Yes, celebrating GLCW Wrestling at Six Flags Gurney. Two shows. It's called Great America, I thought. Well, but it's in Gurney, Illinois. Yeah, just, yeah. just outside Chicago. Okay, just outside of Chicago, 3 p.m., 6 p.m. The Man Beast Rhino will be there doing his thing, devastating Six Flags. And uh, you can actually, you don't need to get tickets for that. You can just get tickets for uh, Six Flags. Just get your admission tickets. included with Fourth Fest and the fireworks and all that stuff. And uh, uh, tickets available online. I believe they're buy one, get one free right now, Dave. Sixflags.com. That is uh, that segment, ladies and gentlemen, but still to come here on the Pro Wrestling Report, we're going to talk about last night's WWE SmackDown. We're also going to, uh, we've got a special gift to present to a special person celebrating their birthday here huh. this week in the studio. Yes. And you just, just you wait. Just you wait. All that still to come here on the Pro Wrestling Report, prime time, Saturday night. There's only one place to get the latest from pro wrestling, including the only place to get 100% verified wrestling news. Watch or listen to all of our latest TV and radio broadcasts on demand and get caught up on wrestling news between episodes. PWRshow.com is the cleanest, friendliest, and most fan-friendly source for wrestling news on the web. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Pro Wrestling Report, primetime Saturday night. Damian Nelson sitting alongside David Hero, and uh, it is... You know what? Before we go any further, I don't know if you've, you've seen the, uh, the shipment that came into receiving this week. Yeah, the, On C the, dock. the COD shipment that I had to pay for without the PWR Amex. Not overly pleased about also that. Also this week, just last Thursday, uh, a, a, a young man was celebrating a birthday. I believe his 10th birthday. Yeah, number 10. And we're all Hashtag about, 10. you know, you all out there and birthday wishes and whatnot. So I'd like to, come on in here, young man. Cal Hero, you might know him. I, celebrating his I 10th absolutely do know him. birthday this past Thursday. Cal, how are you? Good. Good. It's good to see you. Come on, come on over here. Get a look at him. Get a, in the He's shot wearing there. The, 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 the family colors. Well, you know what? He is. But Cal, in celebration of your birthday, your tenth birthday, it's a milestone birthday. You know, yep. you can you can do some different things now that you weren't able to do at nine. I've got a gift for you. What? I have for you the first, well, the second of the lot of the official 
Oh, Official Nelson Family T-shirt. Oh yeah, the recognized symbol of excellence in professional wrestling. The shirt, it's Irish and shield, green in color, Jameson in spirit. Cal, here you are, sir. It's so much better on you than that ridiculous three-year-old design shirt, the Super Friend shirt. Oh, oh, oh. And I'm going to wear it right here together with you. We will be brothers on. from another mother in our Nelson family t-shirts. Look at this. This is ridiculous. Good job, Cal. Look at that. Don't, doesn't it feel, do you feel it? Do you feel it? Do you feel yourself getting smarter yes, at I just do. that moment? Congratulations, Cal. Look at that. Looks good. Looks good. No, good. Uh, green is not his color. Crest. Yes. Oh. Yes. Yes. Are you kidding me? Yes. Oh, it's uh, yes. real. I hope there was money in that card you gave him also yes. because he, he sold yes. out. He sold out his father. It's a better shirt. Thanks, Luke. Yes. Ridiculous. Well, you know what? I was going to make Cal this week's Star of the Week, but no. Oh, yeah. You made yourself Star of the Week last week. That's fine, but I deserved it. But this week's Star of the Week is the guy you doubted last week. The one, the only, Damian Sandow. From the SmackDown brand, he will make his Money in the Bank debut. Talk about a guy who is going places, and he's a super Who did friend. he replace? What do you mean? He replaced Alberto Del Rio on your team, right? Well, yeah, but Del Rio's already back, so I, I already lost Damian Sanda. But so I, it ultimately gets you nothing. But I've endorsed him as a super friend. You don't endorse. Your endorsements mean nothing. He defeats Zack Ryder, your guy. Damian Sandow, this week's PWR Star of the Week. Huh. Well, fascinating. Uh, thank you for that, I guess. Uh, with that, let's roll into the beginning of this week's SmackDown report, actually, and take a look at the show that was broadcast last night, which did feature Damian Sandow starting or being placed in a Money in the Bank qualifying matchup, thus being in the Money in the Bank matchup, as uh, several participants were determined on the SmackDown side of things last night, including your boy, Tensai. Tensai, he is now in the Money in the Bank you know what? My two sleeper picks are in there. They have made it, and they might be the two of the favorites right now to win on the SmackDown side. Unlikely. You got to believe Damian Nelson. Do you believe Santino Morella has a chance? No, not at all. He's in the match. He qualified. Yeah, but I never picked him to, ha to have a chance. <sighs> Zack Ryder's not in. Otunga's not in. That's amazing that Zack Ryder's not in. Or it's amazing Otunga. that Cody Rhodes isn't in. Christian oh my, that's right, yes. Cody Rhodes did Temporarily. It. Hashtag save Cody. Yeah, from your villainous ways. <laughs> uh, Money in the Main qualifying matchups, definitely the way to go. And on SmackDown, we saw some good wrestling as a result. Uh, your boy Ryback, not in a qualifying matchup, but seemingly the list not complete of people who will be in this Ryback matchup. Ryback will not be in Money in the Bank. Will not? No. Ain't no way? No way. No Impossible. chance? Impossible. No chance. Hmm. Huh. Nice glasses you got over there. What are you? It's been hot out this you past know what? week. You it's know? been ridiculously hot. I mean, I'm not trying to look. You're, I know what you're up to. You're, you're, you are assimilating to the book of truth. You're, no. you're going to be wearing sunglasses now. You're starting because you know what? Truth Martini. Picture After in your place. watching last week's show, Truth should have been sitting on his book. I mean, did you see? He was like, what, up to here? Come on. Just because you're lifting. I'm always lifting, hanging and clanging. Also, we found out AJ would be the special guest referee for the matchup between CM Punk and Daniel Bryan at Money in the Bank. The, uh, the prominence of AJ Lee continues in WWE. The downfall of mankind. I'm sorry? The downfall of mankind. It all started with an apple. Now there's AJ. <laughs> Smackdown last night. Uh, again, heavy on the wrestling. Uh, we found out that uh, Teddy Long is going to be in charge of both Raw and SmackDown next week as the rolling GMs continue. Your thoughts on the show overall? You know what? I thought SmackDown, you know what? SmackDown was good. They're, they're, they're building Cody towards Money in the Bank. Their stars were out. They were there. The guys that had to win won. The guys that should have won lost. Uh, interesting stuff.
That's this week's SmackDown Report, ladies and gentlemen. Now let's talk about Ring of Honor Wrestling. And as we had Unbreakable Michael Elgin and Truth Martini in the studio here last week, Ring of Honor had the pay-per-view offering on internet pay-per-view last week as well, Best in the World. The main event was for the Ring of Honor Wrestling Championship, Kevin Steen versus Davey Richards. If Davey Richards or Davey Richards uh, would re be receiving his final opportunity at the Ring of Honor Championship, and uh, that final opportunity was one where he came up short in a matchup with Kevin Steen and some bizarreness after the matchup with Kevin Steen, I, I guess, turning full heel, but the fans didn't seem to really receive that. But a great match between these two. Great match, and you know what? It's, uh, it's like passing the torch in Ring of Honor where now Kevin Steen is going to be the bulldozer going forward. Opens up for a whole new, whole new line of challengers for his title. And, uh, of course, you can watch Ring of Honor each and every Saturday night right here on My24 Milwaukee. Well, David, that is a wrap. That is this week's Pro Wrestling Report primetime Saturday night. Again, programming reminders, Monday Night Meltdown moves to Tuesdays this week only. Tuesday, 9 o'clock p.m. after the live WWE SmackDown. And then primetime returns next Saturday night, no Wednesday edition this week, so that you could all celebrate the 4th of July without distractions. We'd rather have you outside at the barbecue than inside watching PWR. So, for that one. This is Damian Nelson saying thank you so much for joining us here on the Pro Wrestling Report Primetime Saturday night. We'll see you next week.